Hello, this is Clubge Games. Uh, I just did a bunch of refactoring of the abilities in Daughter of Dreams, so I thought I'd go over them, as well as post this as kind of an introduction to the game for people who haven't seen it before. Uh, I have a save file prepared here uh, a little bit later in the game with all three of our characters that are in the game so far. Uh, and we'll jump into it. For those that have, uh, the alpha testers that have played the Previous versions will understand some of the changes that are here, but uh, otherwise I'll just kind of talk about what all the abilities do and my reasoning behind them. Uh, I did a lot of adjusting to this today and yesterday because I was identifying some problems and I want to talk about those. So first of all, I guess I'll start with Lydia, who's the second character we get. And uh, all three of the characters uh, have their own resource that they are using primarily above the others. So everybody has health and magic points and action points, and Lydia is the one that does stuff with magic points. Uh, so let me just move her out of the way. And then uh, Lydia's spells um, can be imbued, which spend extra mana uh, magic points, that is, to do things such as increase the radius, or in this one, it increases the base damage, and this one increases MP healing. Uh, and I wanted Lydia before, I wanted Lydia to be someone that could also help uh, grant MP to other players so that she could play a better role in the, the entire team dynamic. But I found that before, the issue I had was that she ended up becoming a kind of MP battery. So it was usually more effective for Sonia to use her spells uh, and then just be fueled up by Lydia because Lydia can't do all that much damage with her magic points. And so I addressed this, instead of just giving her a, uh, get, instead of just giving Lydia a magic restoring ability, I decided to instead go with a magic donation ability. So this spell is very simple. It just cures status ailments, but if you imbue, it will restore magic points, uh, which makes it serve functionally as a uh, magic donation ability because uh, imbuing costs magic. So Lydia cannot gain magic points from this spell. So I'm going to pop up in the debug menu and just show this working. If I give Sonia zero MP, I can use sanctification on Sonia, and I can imbue for the maximum of five. And now Sonia has five more MP, and Lydia has lost just one from the cost of the spell. And if Sonia had been on fire, then that would have cured her status effect. Um, so then I wanted to make sure that if this is how Lydia can grant MP to other characters, she's still a little bit of an MP battery, but it's much more limited because it takes from her own mana pool. Uh, I keep saying mana because I've been playing a lot of games with mana, but in this game, they're called magic. But if I say mana, just forgive me. Um, and, uh, so before she had a draining cast that would do regain magic points for each hit. Uh, this has been changed, and you'll notice I did not remember to change the description, so it still says for each hit, but it is actually for total damage done, uh, which I can show if... Uh, so if I hit these two things, that gives me two. And let me just quit real quick and give myself, a, give myself all the items, and I can buff her attack power uh, with this item. Let's see. A little bit scattered. I meant to give these to me beforehand. I need this one. Lots of items. Only about half of these are actually in the game. A lot of them are just for testing. Okay, so let me reload those guys. Okay. So now if I set Sonia's MP zero, she can use her magic cast and hit these two guys, and it'll do four damage total and restore her four MP. So this means that at the base level, at the very beginning of the game, it's just as strong as it was before, exactly as much. But once you get items that let you increase your damage, you can also use items uh, like consumable items that uh, temporarily increase your damage. Then Lydia could do an incredible amount of MP restoration, but only for herself. And then she would donate it to other people. And I like this dynamic because the way this works means is that uh, she can be kind of an MP battery, but in order to get more, she has to be active on the battlefield by attacking with her chakra uh, to regain that MP before giving it to someone else. So you're doing at least two things, and then you can spend that MP for other things like attacking or um, freezing things and stuff like that. 
So that is how I addressed Lydia, and I'm now much happier with her design. The changes are, frankly, pretty subtle. Uh, but Lydia has the most unused abilities because I've implemented uh, almost a dozen different abilities for Lydia and trying to figure out how to make her build work with just these four abilities, plus this bonus one, which is free. Um, and it took me a long time to feel happy, and I'm much more happy with it now uh, in this kind of MP restoration without doing any kind of HP. Like We'll leave that to Duran, and I'll get to Duran at the end because he's a little bit different than the other two. So then... Uh, the, the other reason that this I felt like this change to Lydia worked out pretty well is that I also made some changes to Sonia. Now, before, the main reason... So, so there, there were two reasons I wanted to change Lydia. The first was that I felt like Lydia, as an MP-focused character, should be able to restore MP to the team members. Uh, that just seemed like it fit the character well, and it would allow her to play a better role in the whole team. But then the second reason is that Sonia runs out of magic points because she has no way to restore magic points. Uh, and this is a problem in twofold that both encourage the kind of MP battery gameplay uh, where Lydia would just charge her MP because Sonia really needs that MP in order to attack. There's also a single character challenge mode in Daughter of Dreams where you can play the game and do all the battles with only one character. And Lydia could do all right because she can restore her own MP and keep casting spells. Duran can do all right because he can... Uh, he casts spells with his health points, and he can regain health. Uh, and Sonia would just run out of magic points and then no longer be able to do damage, uh, which kind of sucked. Um, and so I wanted Lydia to be able to restore that, but I also kind of want Sonia to be able to stand on her own. While I want them to be a team, uh, I found the game is also really fun with only one character in the party, and I want that to be possible with everybody. Uh, so I decided I would also just give Sonia her own personal MP restoration ability that would fit with her own class. So I'll talk about that now. Uh, Sonia gains charge using this spell. A little orange, yeah, yellow ball. She now has one charge. And next turn, this will become one extra action. Um, I am pretty sure if I stop the battle now, they will just kill me. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we'll let them attack and see what happens. Um, so then Sonia Sonia is the action point character, and she gets lots of extra turns, and she converts those action point charges into extra damage with her secondary charge attack. And the change I've made for her, these two abilities used to be her special abilities, and her weapons were just basic attacks. I just made the weapon attacks the gain charge and deal damage based on charge spells, and I made the gain charge one free. Uh, I was brainstorming with my brother, and he was like, why does her spells cost MP? And uh, I couldn't give a good answer to that, since the other two characters have their own special attacks that, again, don't cost MP. Here's the magic cast for gaining MP, and here's the life strike and sacrificial strike for gaining health and doing damage at low health. And so I just decided I'd make Sonya the same, and it, much, it works out much better. Now this means that she can always gain charge, even if she has no magic points, which immediately resolved a lot of the problem with her having to have magic points but having no way to get them. And then there's this charge strike. If you want to do a lot of damage, you do need the magic points. That's just a balance thing. But she can also convert all of her charge into uh, MP. So this one costs 2 AP, which is the most AP expensive spell in the game, but it will take all the charge that she has and it will turn it into AP. So if I... Um, if I give her some charge, status effects, uh, let's, let's lower her MP and give her some charge. I don't necessarily need to demonstrate it working, but there we go. That takes all the charge, which is basically three turns that you could spend, so it's not the most cost-effective thing. But Sonya is always going to have a lot of extra charge, and it only turns into turns at one or two at a time. Uh, so it can be a worthwhile payoff if you do it right now. And this gives her something else to do with her charge. If she doesn't need to use it to attack, she can use it to restore her MP, which gives her an entirely self-sustaining thing. Now, this also works for other characters. I can cast this on something else. I can even cast it on an enemy, which does have niche uses. Because if an enemy gives themselves charge, you might prefer to disable it uh, in favor of uh, giving them a little bit of extra MP for spells. Um, now, 
Uh, to aid with this mechanic, I also added this new ability. Both of these two are basically replacing what were before boring basic attacks, uh, which also will convert all AP into charge. So the idea of this is that, uh, let's see here, let me first cure Lydia. There, status effect's gone. I don't have an effect for that one yet. Uh, and then we can take dynamic deference, which is just at one magic point and it's otherwise free. And we can take Sonia, or sorry, we can target Lydia. Ooh, sound effect. And all of her current action points becomes charged. So this, the reason for the term deference is that we're saying wait until later to use those actions. So again, this is not actually generating more actions, but um, rather allows that character to do more with their actions in the future if they don't have anything good to do right now. And she can use this same thing on her allies to restore some MP. It's not as effective as Lydia, but it does stuff with action points in charge, which makes me feel like it fits better into the whole build. And so I'm a lot happier with this as well. And I think it will just be more powerful and more fluid and fun to be able to gain charge for free and be self-sustaining for that character while being stronger if supported by the other allies. Uh, and Duran, I didn't change at all, which is why I wasn't really planning to talk about him much in this video. Uh, but I'll contrast him to the others real quickly, which is that he does stuff with health points, uh, which includes regaining health. So he's lower and uh, let's see, I'll just steal some from Lydia. Does three damage, regains two health to max. And then Sacrificial Strike will do more health, more damage at low health. So he both gains health effectively, and if he's on low health, he can do more damage. So you kind of want to do both. And you spend health to cast spells. So like this... We'll reduce my health, and now you can see that Sacrificial Strike does four instead of two, um, etc. And so this is why Duran just kind of always worked, is that using his health pool as his mana pool and then being able to regenerate it meant he was also self-sustaining. Uh, on his own, he is not uh, super much of a team player. Most of his spells work directly. However, I have a spell that I'm planning to add to Duran that will change this a lot. And the reason that it's not enabled by default is that it's very confusing. And I don't want new players to be stuck on it, but it's very cool. Um, my favorite ability, and that is Lifelink. And I'm just gonna give that to him real quick. Okay, so now I'll show Lifelink with Duran. If we go here, let's have him uh, put Lifelink on this far away clobber. Now, camera. If Sonia was to attack them both, it will also hit the Globber. And she'll gain AP for having hit that thing. Um, now that was a friendly fire situation. It will also eventually work on uh, buffs such as uh, Dynamic Deference or Arcane Energize. Um, it would work on his uh, Life Strike or yeah, uh, any of his attacks. And then again with sanctification, uh, Lydia would be able to, here we go, sanctify both him and the Globber, uh, which obviously that wouldn't be useful, but you can cast lifelink on your allies or the enemies. So you basically use it as a kind of custom, make an AOE thing. The only restriction is that Duran is always part of the AOE, uh, which makes this a very interesting and powerful ability with a pretty big downside because Duran is gonna be taking a lot of damage. Um, and so I'm excited to see how the lifelink mechanic will work in tandem with the others. Uh, so that was just a bit of me talking about the design for the ability, some of the changes I've made recently, and my thought process behind it. It's a little bit of a rambly video, though I'm probably going to have to edit a little bit. But for a while, I have been wanting to kind of show some more progress of Daughter of Dreams in video form with actual gameplay. And uh, hopefully this is interesting to some folks. Let me know if you want to see more, if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.